I ask people to inhale through their nose and pull that energy all the way to the top. And when they get to the top of their head, I ask them to keep those muscles contracted, not let them go and hold their breath. Now, this is not a torture session because when you squeeze those muscles and you hold your breath, you're increasing pressure inside your spinal column called intrathecal pressure. You know when you lift something up and you go, and you do that, you're pushing against your insides? Well, as you squeeze those muscles and hold your breath and squeeze a little bit more, I'm not asking you to turn purple and explode. I'm, all I want you to do is inhale slowly and pull that up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, and squeeze a little bit more and just exert a little pressure up into your brain. Because right at the base of the third ventricle sits the pineal gland. And when that energy strikes the pineal gland, and you're holding your breath and you're pushing against that pineal gland, there's tiny little crystals in the pineal gland that are calcium carbonate crystals. And when you exert a mechanical stress on those crystals, it produces what's called the piezoelectric effect. It takes a mechanical stress and turns it into electromagnetic energy. And when that electromagnetic energy gets to a certain point and the crystals are stretched, all of a sudden the crystals contract and the field goes right back and produces another stress against the crystals, which then produces another electromagnetic field. And now, deet, 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 you got a little antenna going on up there. And you're awakening your pineal gland. Right? Listen closely. The moment that energy strikes the pineal gland and that energy is very different than it was sitting down here. When it moves, by the time it strikes the pineal gland, it's a higher frequency. And it's going to begin to influence the chemistry of the gland. And all of a sudden, something magical happens. The pineal gland takes melatonin and begins to turn it into some very profound metabolites. Two of the most powerful antioxidants known to man anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-microbial, anti-inflammatory. Two molecules. You take that molecule and you just tweak it again by adding another methyl group or a few other carbon molecules, and now you have the same chemical found in hibernating animals. Why is that important? In hibernation, the body goes into stasis. There's no drives, there's no sex drive, there's no appetite. The body is no longer the mind. It's no longer bothering you. And if you're going to become a butterfly as a caterpillar, it might be a good idea that you want to get beyond your body. Yes or no? If you take that molecule and you tweak it again, you have the same chemical found in electric eels a biophospholuminescent chemical that produces very high energy and amplitudes in the nervous system. The nervous system is becoming activated. Higher energy, higher amplitudes. And of course, the biophospholuminescent creates wonderful, pristine imagery and colors. You take that molecule, you tweak it again, and you have the most powerful hallucinogenic known to man, dimethyltryptamine. And all of a sudden, what's going on between your ears is way more real than anything that's in this realm. And your senses are heightened in that realm, and your awareness is heightened, your conscious, your, and this is heightened, your brain is in ba uh, uh, gamma brainwave patterns, and it's processing a different energy. And you go dimensional. It is the door to dimensions. You take that molecule and you tweak it again, and you make a benzodiazepine. You know what that is? Valium. It anesthetizes the analytical mind. It begins to relax the thinking brain. The person all of a sudden is calm. They feel safe. They're relaxed and super aware. And that's why our students can be in Delta during their meditation because those neurotransmitters are just chilling them out. They're relaxed. The unknown's happening and they're not afraid of it. They're present with it. So then the breath then is designed to pull the mind out of the body and to liberate this energy. And when the energy moves up into the brain, we've just measured this in Italy. Oh, we got a beautiful, beautiful three-dimensional picture of the brain when a person's in high gamma during the breath. And the whole neocortex is turned off, sedated, but in gamma. And the center of the pineal gland is bright red. This just proved our theory.
It was beautiful. And that person was connecting to the unified field. And this center in the back of the brain connects you to that realm called time-space, where there's an eternal amount of time. In this realm, there's an eternal amount of space. In the quantum, you have an infinite amount of time. Time is eternal, and all of space, all dimensions exist in the eternal now, all possibilities. There is no past life or future life. It's all now. And then, when that occurs, what is equal to your own soul's evolution, things start to be revealed to you. And the biggest lie we've been ever told is that we're linear beings living a linear life. We are dimensional beings living a dimensional life. And when the doors of dimension open to you and you get a glimpse of who you really are, you're not going to take your coworker so seriously because you're going to be in many dimensions. So then if your body is a magnet and you're more in survival than creation and you've been thinking and feeling and stored all that energy as emotion in those first three centers and now you're more matter and less energy, you're not running a current through your body. There's no, there's no magnet. So it's just like that piece of metal, but, but there's no field around it. There's no charge. And Asian cultures have known this for generations because as you start to accelerate that energy, that, 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 that fluid, and it begins to create that inductance field, you're activating a tube in your body called the prana tube that yogis have talked about for thousands of years. You're activating the movement of energy. And that begins to run a current. And as it passes up through each vertebral segment, there's nerves that go to different parts of your body. And all of a sudden, you're running a current through your nervous system as it passes through each center. And all of a sudden, you have the movement of energy. And according to Asian cultures, all disease is the blocking of the flow of energy. So then they say, okay, the energy is not flowing through certain meridians, through certain pathways. Let's put some conductors called steel needles here and we'll move the energy all the way out. So when you do this breath and you inhale and you start moving this energy, you are going to create a current running through your body. You're going to feel it. And if you do the same things, you get the same things happening in your life. But if you try something different, you should have a different experience. Just saying.